What's up everyone, Arif here back with another tutorial and in this one we are looking at Aomi back upper software. If you ever wanted to kind of just have an easy way to back up your system, this software is about as easy as it gets. I've actually been using it for quite a few years. I own I think almost every one of those software packages and yes they did reach out to me for this video but like I said, I've already been using it, so I was more than willing to just make the video for them because I thought it was going to be easy content. Now, you see here they have multiple pieces of software partition assistant back upper. It, like I said, we're doing back upper today. So in the back upper software, they have a lot of different versions. They have the standard, the professional, the workstation, the server, tech editions. No, you don't need these unless you're Dell. But the only thing I'm gonna point out here as a note, because uh, it's a little bit sus, not gonna lie, it's a little bit sus. Uh, the price is here. So this video screen you're looking at right now was recorded on August 1st, 2022. And you can see here, Professionals 49, back upper workstations 59, and the server is 199. This is the live screen today uh, on August 22nd, 2022. And the professionals 49 the workstation is 59 but you can see at the bottom here it was 24 hour flash sale 60 percent off uh i'm no math magician but i don't think that's 60 percent off anything that's a little bit sus i'm not gonna lie that that's pretty sus and i'm not wild about companies that do these kind of business practices of you know always going out of sale kind of kind of advertising but I don't want that to take away from the quality of the software. Like I said, I've been using it for a long, long time and I do stand by it, which is why I took the, the video, but I wanted to let you know that don't don't believe the the FOMO pricing on the website. It's, it's pretty much always these prices. I don't think I've ever actually seen it be not these prices. But either way, what you do to get it, you come in here, back up or standard, you just download the freeware and then they'll send you a key when you upgrade and you just input the key. So once you do that, then you are all good to go. It'll upgrade to whatever version that you got. Looking at the software now, this is it once it's all installed. And you can see here, we have new backup, which is just this window over here. We have new sync, which is this window over here. A restore function, which is exactly what you think it is. It restores from the backup file that you made. You have clone, which is fantastic, and we'll get to that. And then we have tools, which we'll come back to. We also come over to the right side and we can see we have a settings here. We will come to the settings in a little bit. But let's start with the home screen. On the far left here, we have home. We have new backup and new sync. So let's click new backup. Now in the backup section, you can do a full system backup. You can also do just a single disk backup. So if you have non windows based disks. Like if I click into here and I say add disk, we can see I want to do a full disk backup of one of my many, many hard drives. So you're totally able to do that. And if we come down into the backup schema, you'll see here backup method, incremental, full backup or differential backup. A full backup is exactly what you think. It is a full backup. It takes all the data and just backs it up from the hard drive to the destination. Now, incremental and differential backups are kind of the same thing, but they are a little different. Now, the caveat to both is they must have a full backup to work off of, okay? You have to have a full backup to work off of, which is why you see here, after every X number of incremental backups, perform a full backup or differential backups. It switches the wording here, it's the same thing. Now, if you wanna know what the exact difference between a differential backup and an incremental backup is, uh, I got this off their website because they never decided to put it in the tool tips up here. So coming to their website, they actually have a full fat description of what all this stuff does. And to, to make a very long story short, you can read it here as I have it placed on the screen, just pause the video. But bo for both, like I said, a full backup must exist. And all images in an incremental backup series share a sequential relationship and the data can be recovered to any state when any incremental backup was done. If any one of the incremental image files in the sequence is damaged, all the subsequent images will also be invalid. So basically it just continues on any, any F-ups that have happened during 
the last one where it all screwed up. They all carry forward. Whereas in the differential backup, all data can be returned to the state when the differential backup was done, if anything is damaged. If there are logic changes made to the data between backups, then each differential backup will become progressively larger. So it's trade-offs, right? Like you have one which is faster in a smaller, in kind of a smaller size or a smaller image, uh, image space taken. But then you also have the risk of errors carrying forward. Uh, it's one of those trade-offs. I personally like to do a differential backup. That's the one I've been using forever and a day now. So I I've never really liked the thought of incremental and in case something screws up, it just carries forward because there's times I'll just back stuff up and actually not check it. And that's bad IT, but I just don't check it all the time because I have like 10 computers in my house. So there's that. Now you can click this button here after every six differential backups perform a full backup. Like I said, each one needs a full backup to work off of. So this is just good to have. Once you've clicked on and you do your full backups, you can also do an automatic cleanup. So we click this on and here we have, you know, clean up by quantity, clean up by time. If you want to clean up by the last like seven days, you can also clean up by the weekly or by the monthly and also by space, which is taking up the most. So I just clean up normally. I normally personally clean up by times. Uh, I like to clean up by every four weeks and six months. Uh, seven days is a little bit is a little bit anal, but you can do that. But uh, yeah, I normally like to do about every six months for sure is when I like to clear stuff out and then create one full backup and always retain it before performing a scheme. You can do this. I don't know if you want to. This depends on how much hard drive space you have, if you can afford to have something like that. Normally, people who are trying to do this kind of stuff will have a few extra terabytes just free so they can afford to use that space. But if you only have like one or two hard drives, well, if you only have one hard drive, you're kind of screwed. If you have two hard drives, uh, it becomes a little iffy. But either way, these are all the options for the backup system. And then we come into options and you can see here the backup mode. Just I would normally keep all these the way they are. Uh, I've never had any issues with them. The pre command, the post command after you run a sync. And then you have the advanced, which is what kind of compression do you want? Do you want how do you want to split media? Do you want to split it by size? Do you want to split it by uh, predetermined kind of systems like a fat 32 or a zip or whatever? I just leave it on recommended because normally that's once again been fine for me. Operational priority. And then you can also say create a folder with the same name as the task of the target location and save global settings. So these are all the features of the disk backup system. Like I said, it's a very strong system. It's been very well made. Uh, and that was system backup, disk backup. We have partition backup here, which has all the same stuff uh, as before. So if you want to just back up a particular partition on a drive, 100% you can just do that. And you might be wondering how is that different from a full disk backup? Well, some disks, uh, depending how IT-ish, how nerdy you actually are, you might be splitting your disks into several partitions and you only want to back up the one. So you can just back up that particular partition versus the entire disk. And then you have a file backup, which is just a file backup. <laughs> uh, there's not, not much to say there. A file is a file, like, you know, my documents, you can add that there. But speaking of files, let's come down to the next thing, which is sync. If we come into sync, we can see here we have four different types of sync. We have basic sync, real time sync, mirror sync, and two way sync. Basic sync is just your normal plain Jane copy and paste. There, that's it. It does not create an image file or anything. It's just a copy paste that they kind of just threw in. Now, real time sync, real time sync is syncing in real time. Anytime you're making changes to a directory or to a file, it will keep an eye on that on that file or directory and just keep adding as you're as you're making changes. A mirror sync. You might be wondering how is a mirror sync different from a real time sync? Well, a mirror sync always aims to keep stuff the same between the target and the destination folder. So if you delete a file in a in a target folder, then the destination folder it will also be uh, deleted or if you overwrite something it will also overwrite it in the destination folder and now you're thinking well there's two ways saying how is that different from a mirror saying they both sound like you know that except like i said in mirror if you change the target then it changes in the destination 
but in a two-way, if you change the destination, it'll also change in the target. So it's, it's a two-way street, meaning it's more of a, it's, it's a much more higher liability to you if you don't know what you're doing to use a two-way sync. Almost always, I think most people would want to use a real-time sync or a mirror sync. Two-way is one of those very dangerous kind of things where unless you super know what you're doing, uh, you might you might end up losing a backup that you were hoping to maintain. So I would personally almost always stick, stick with real-time or basic, basic sync, or real-time or mirror sync, sorry. Basic sync is great, but I can copy paste on my own. Two-way is, once again, use at your own discretion. If we look at each of the four sync types here, let's start with basic. And we'll come into the options menu. We see we have general command and advanced. Here in general, we have email notifications, sync the deletions in the source directory to the destination and verify the integrity of the destination. Um, I'm personally never use the sync the deletions. If I want to delete something, I'll go delete it. But I always turn on the verify the integrity because that's just good practice. Command, I don't normally run commands. And then advanced, you can always have it create an extra folder for you and you can check the priority that you want. Normal for me has always been just fine. Coming back, we go into real time. And here you can see we don't have the commands part. We do have a general with no email option. And then we have the advanced, which is automatically create the folder. Next, we come into mirror. And we have our general tab with our email notifications, our pre and post commands, and then the advanced, which is just the same as all the others. And finally, we come into two-way sync. And as you go into the options here, we have the email notifications, which we're going to turn on now, a command, and the advanced. So they're all relatively the same amount of settings, with except for the email not being available on a few of them. But let's look at how to turn on the email right now. If we come into the top right, we click on the little hamburger kind of looking icon and we click on settings. And you can see here we have notifications. You can just come in here and turn on your notifications and have it send out to whether you want it to your Gmail, whether you want it to a custom STMP server. You can pick however you want to send notifications, but you have your pick of the litter, so to speak. And then backup mode, this is what you saw earlier in the backup. I normally just leave all these stock. And in the advanced, you can pick your kind of compression and your splitting but then you also have automatically check the backups upon completion, which you should absolutely be doing. And then enable a window self adaptive screen for DPI settings. That's just a performance thing. You can opt into the pro program if you want it. I never do, obviously. And then do not show the USB plugged dialog. That's just nice to have. It doesn't really affect anything one way or the other. So, oh, right. We haven't inserted the email address. We're just gonna turn that off for now, but that's how you turn on the email system. As we come into the left side of the menu again, we look at restore. Restore is just, once again, you pick your image file from the backup and just click restore. When we come down into clone, this is the other reason why you would be using AOMI backup or software. This is the reason why I found the company to begin with. Uh, I needed to migrate from my hard drive to my SSD and didn't want to do a whole format thing. So I was looking for a way to clone and this is how I found it. This is a fantastic feature in something I would say 100% justifies the $49.99 price tag. 100%. I, I will never disagree with that with that statement at all because the system clone is completely invaluable. Like you pick it, uh, well, I'm not gonna do this right now, but you pick it, it's gonna select your drive, you select what you wanna clone onto and you just let it run. Absolutely fantastic. You can also do the same for an entire hard drive if you want to do that or once again just a partition like you did with the backup if you just want to clone the particular partition you can do that too finally the tools this area is it just has an enormous amount of stuff and you can do so much here you can create a bootable media you can look at image you can look at your recovery environment so if you come in here you can see which one do you want to use Obviously, I'm using the Aomi one. You can have your disk wipe. You can have notification settings, which is once again, your email. 
You have your storage management. So if you have like a NAS, you can always add in the network path of the NAS and monitor stuff that way. You can have your local paths where you can just keep all your hard drives. You have your logs, you have your disk image, you have configurations. If you're taking it from another system, you can always do that. Or you can do a portable version. This one though, this is annoying. This is only available in the technician edition. And you might be wondering, how much is that? Well, let's find out. The technician edition is $419, which is absolutely insane for this one extra feature. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit flabbergasted that they would charge so much money uh, for this one feature. Now to have Windows Server, okay, I get that. I don't know if I would say that's worth an extra like 230 bucks. I don't know if I could say that, but you know, if you want to have portable, portable versions, Hey, there, and there you go. You can always get the technician edition of Aomi back upper. And then finally we have the free tools here, which are cloud backup. So you can get started on this and this will take you to their website, which is C backup. You can also look at their disk partition manager, which is a only partition assistant. They have their iPhone transfer backup system. And then you also have the AV remote, which is actually any viewer. I did a tutorial walking you through it. You can see for this thumbnail here. And finally you have data recovery, which is their one click data recovery system. This is just another one of their software packages that they offer. So there you guys have it. That is the walkthrough of the Aomi back upper software. If you're looking to kind of back up your system, clone a hard drive, migrate, migrate between hard drives. I cannot recommend this system enough. They offer so many features that you don't get in the windows system and the amount of flexibility you have for scheduling and just redundant security on each of their backup systems, like the differential versus incremental. Uh, how often do you want to keep stuff? Does it auto delete? Does it send you email notifications? These are all, these are all things that anyone who does computers on like, uh, on even like a, a semi professional level or even a prosumer level. These are things that you can see value in, in what kind of justify the price tag. Like I said, I was never really thrilled about how much they were charging for it because they always have that per persistent, you know, going out of business kind of pricing structure. I don't like that, but you know, that's just a very small gripe in a grand scheme of things. You can always come to their software, aomitech.com and just take a look at the, at the different versions. They have a comparison, uh, a edition comparison, comparison thing over here. So you can just click that and come see what each one has. But other than that, guys, uh, that this is just a kind of like a walkthrough and a tutorial of how to use the software and what features does it offer. I hope you found some value in this video. If you have questions, please do let me know. I'm always happy to try and answer anything I can. Other than that, guys, my name has been Arif. Make sure you hit that sub button. It really helps me out a lot. Leave a comment in the comment box down below, and I will see all of you on the next video. Bye.